omegyan timirandasya gena jana salakaya chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya mano bistam staptitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padantikam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sunyavari Pastyatya De Sitarine Vanchakalpa Thiruvishya Kripa Sindhu Pyeva Chapatitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Siddhi Gaur Bhakta Rindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare hmm. So along with the uh, celebration of Tulsi Vivaha um, there is a whole pastime behind that but I don't have any information on that Leela Today is also Krishna Rasa Yatra, and that's the day that Krishna danced his Rasa dance. He danced twice during the year, once in the spring and once in the fall. In the spring one, they celebrate in Vrindavan, and the fall one they celebrate in Bengal, like that. So the one in the fall is, they're both the Rasa dance. Uh, and um, so this is the fall rasa dance where Krishna performs his most intimate and most wonderful pastimes. Out of all the pastimes of the Lord, the rasa dance is considered to be the topmost of all pastimes. Here's where he displayed his supreme mercy upon the gopis and fulfilled all their desires unlimitedly, perfectly, so this is the. So there's other one. There's one and most important. Uh, today is also the appearance day of Nimbarka Acharya. So I'll try to speak something on Nimbarka. Nimbarka Acharya is one of the four Sampradaya Acharyas. Each of the Sampradayas has an Acharya. Our Acharya is, uh, who's our Acharya? Madhva. <laughs> Brahma Gaudiya, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. And then we have the Sri Sampradaya, who's the Acharya? Uh, Manuja, and then we have the Vishnu Swami Sampradaya. Who's the Acharya? I mean, who's the head of the Sampradaya? I'm sorry, I gave it the other way. I, to I told the Acharya, now tell me who the Sampradaya is. It's Rudra Sampradaya, Lord Shiva. <laughs> and then we have Nimbarka. And what is the, uh, the Acharyas there? Yeah, Chatrashushana, the four Kumaras, like that, headed by Sanat Kumara. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, Nimbarka appeared somewhere between the 11th and 12th century. His, the date of his appearance is not known. In one village in Dravida province, which is in the south. The provinces in the south are called Dravida. So somewhere in the south he appeared, and um, his father's name was Aruna, Arun, Aruna Pandit, and his mother's name was Jayanti. And um, he grew up very fast in spiritual life. He took to, to spiritual life when he was just a young boy, and excelled in learning all of the Shastras, became effulgent, and uh, he had no taste for material life at all. So he decided to live and go and live at Govardhan Hill. So when he was at Govardhan Hill, he stayed at a place called Nimba Gram. <laughs> Seems like it's the same name as him, but it's called Nimba Gram. 
And uh, there, um, there was one particular pastime where one Jain sannyasi, the Jains also have sannyasis, um, was traveling looking for people to debate, thinking he could de defeat anybody with his philosophy. Of course, the Jain, the Jain philosophy is uh, as mentioned in the uh, fifth canto in Prabhupada's purport. Uh, the, the Jain and the Buddhist philosophies are concocted philosophies. They are uh, concocted religious pr principles. So, um, I don't know much about their background. I forgot the, the name of that one. Who is the head of that one Swami that's famous for in the Jain religion? And he... Um, I forgot his name. Anyway, he's the main person that people talk about when they talk about Jainism. But this one sannyasi, he would go, and he challenged uh, Nimbarka, Nimbaditya, and Nimbarka easily destroyed his philosophy and defeated him. And then Nimbarka welcomed him to come and take dinner with him that evening. But the Jain philosopher Sannyasi said, "I can't take because I don't. We don't eat in the evening time." So Nimbarka climbed the tree, the neem tree, and by his own power, he revealed the sun. Although it was the sun had gone down, he brought the sun back. Somebody, some people say that he actually brought Shudarshan's chakra back. And it was the chakra that looked like the sun. <laughs> because the chakra is also as bright as the sun. And so when the sannyasi saw that, he agreed to. So this is where he got his name, Nimba Aditya. Adit, Adit, Aditya means sun. And Nimba means, refers to the nim tree. So when he climbed the nim tree, he revealed the sun, Nimba, Nimba Aditya. Nimbarka, Nimbadintya, Nimarka. Uh, he has many, many titles. After some time, he was living at Govardhan Hill, and him and a group of brahmanas went to worship Lord Shiva. And they worshiped Lord Shiva very nicely, especially Nimbarka. Lord Shiva actually appeared to Nimbarka by being pleased by his worship. He also worshiped Tulsi at the same time. And he was worshipping Lord Shiva with the leaves of a bale tree, because bale fruit is the favorite of Lord Shiva. He likes bale leaves, so if you offer him bale leaves. And there's also a bale fruit that you make nice juice from, right? In Bengal they have, you know, bale juice. You can drink how much of that? <laughs> Unlimited, right? <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> it's very tasty, right? <laughs> So, yeah. Um, and so Shiva appeared to him and was very pleased with him and said, Because I'm pleased with your devotion and your worship, I want to give you a blessing. Nearby, there is one, there are the four Kumaras and they're performing great penances and austerities. Go and meet them and receive knowledge from them. So. <clears throat> Um, uh, before that happened, of course, he, uh, when he was looking for the four Kumaras, he saw them sitting in meditation on this platform. They were only young boys without clothes. They were just meditating. They were like four years old. And uh, he said he saw them as beautiful as the sun when he saw them. And because he was uh, amazed to see their beauty, he just said, Hare Krishna. And when he did, he broke their meditation. <laughs> and then they turned around to see him. And immediately they could recognize that here is a very elevated personality. So they came and greeted him. He fell at their feet and then he, they were, he worshipped them. And Sanat Kumara actually spoke on behalf of the four Kumaras. And gave him, that instruction, gave him the instructions that he would teach him in knowledge. And he said, you should worship Radha and Krishna. And he gave him a mantra for worship. 
And so he worshipped, he, he started to worship Radha and Krishna by chanting this mantra. And he was so expert at chanting the mantra that Radha and Krishna appeared to him. <laughs> and then when he saw their beautiful forms, they merged into one and became Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when he saw Lord Chaitanya in his beautiful golden form, he fainted. <laughs> and then after coming back to consciousness, he was astonished. He didn't know this form at all. And the Lord said, uh, this is my form that I will appear very soon. I will take the philosophy of all of the four sampradayas and can bring it together as my philosophy, Ajintya, Beta Beta Tattva. Because there is, um, in the Chatur Sanushana Sampradaya, the philosophy is Dvaita Advait, which is one and different. And then there's Kevala Dvaita, there is Vashishta Dvaita, and then there's Advaita. So there are different philosophical teachings. These are quite complex. You'd have to do a little study, but they're available to see what the difference of the four sampradayas are in terms of their philosophical uh, teachings. But they all end in worship of the Supreme Lord, either in Vaikuntha or in Vrindavan. But Nimbarka, the four Kumaras, um, connected him with Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, keep my identity a secret because I will come and I will spread Sankirtan all over Navadweep. And so after seeing Lord Chaitanya, he was blessed by Lord Chaitanya. Um, he started writing many books on the philosophy of Dvaita, Advaita, which is it's similar to Chintya Beta Beta Tattva, but it doesn't have the simultaneously one and different. And it's that the absolute truth is one and two simultaneously. But Lord, but Jiva Goswami coins the phrase Ajintya. It's inconceivable simultaneously, one and two. So this is the inconceivable nature of Lord Chaitanya's teachings. So then he wrote many books, and we know from uh, a little bit of the reading history that their sampradaya is quite prominent around Vrindavan. They haven't spread themselves so wide as the Sri Sampradaya or our Sampradaya or even Vish Vishnu Swami Sampradaya is not very spread very far either. But Sri Sampradaya and Madhva Sampradaya really spread throughout the area of the of the Indian continent. But not in not the Chaturshushana or the four Kumaras. They're mostly in Vrindavan. They have a few mats in the south, but mostly in the area of Vrindavan. And their main deity for worship is Srimati Radharani. They worship Radha as their main focus like that. So this same personality appeared again in Lord Chaitanya's. And he, Lord, the Lord Chaitanya will actually told him, you will appear in my past too. Your name will be Keshava Kashmiri. And you will be a pundit. <laughs> And you will go around everywhere and conquering everyone. And everyone, when they hear your name, they will run in fear. <laughs> because just like nowadays, how does, how does people be, become popular or famous? If there's some kind of movie star, right? Or if they run around with their pajamas on, throwing basketballs. <laughs> Not pajamas, but shorts. <laughs> So basketball stars, sports heroes, movie stars, sometimes politicians become famous. But in Vedic culture, you were famous if you had not Shastric knowledge. Mm -hmm. And to keep your Shastric knowledge, you have, would have to, your position as great, you would have to debate others. And people would not debate people they know they couldn't be beat because it wouldn't they would have to change their philosophy because one of the rules of debate was soon if you're defeated, defeated, defeated by the person you debate, you have to adopt their philosophy. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays it doesn't work. You defeat somebody and they still stay the same. Because right? <laughs> right? they wear their philosophy as some egotistical pride, but people 
kept philosophy as a way of life and always wanted to learn higher and higher teachings. So Keshava Kasmeri was known as Digvijay Pandit. He was the best because he was empowered directly by uh, Mother Saraswati. Marasattu Saraswati, he, she had, he had worshipped him, her, and she had he had blessed her him with great knowledge. So everywhere he would go, nobody would debate him. In fact, whoever did debate him were easily defeated. So one day, or one evening, it was an evening time, Lord Chaitanya was on the bank of the Ganga with his students. He was teaching Vyakarana. Vyakarana is grammar. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya was was teacher was a, a grammar a grammatical teacher, uh, grammar and logic. So he was teaching his students, and it just so happened that uh, Keshava Kashmiri came that same way, and the Lord got up and greeted him and said, "Oh, you are the famous Keshava Kashmiri. Welcome to our assembly." You have so much knowledge, you have so much learning, you have so much popularity as being the best of all pundits. The Lord just started to praise him, make his pride go bigger and bigger. He was already proud. The Lord wanted to make it bigger. <laughs> and so he did that. And then, after greeting him, he said, because we are here by Mother Ganges, and you are the worshiper also of Mother Ganges, so please recite some verses in glorification of Mother Ganga. So Pandaji was really happy to hear that. And he got a chance to show off his knowledge. <laughs> so as fast as the wind, he recited 100 verses, verses in glorification of Mother Ganga. Now... After that, Lord Chaitanya said, oh, that was so nice. But I would like to just comment on one verse, number 64. And then he recited the verse exactly according to the verse, word for word, without changing any of the words. The pundit was amazed. He said, how, does, how did you remember that? I recited those verses as fast as the wind. Lord Chaitanya said, the Lord has given each of us some kind of qualification. You have a great qualification to glorify and speak wonderful poetry. And I have the ability to remember everything I hear. <laughs> Which is called Shrutidhara. There's a terminology that's used. One who can remember everything is called Shrutidhara. So then, but then Lord Chaitanya said, actually in that verse I would like to give some understanding. He said, what understanding can you give? He said, well, actually, there are five faults in that verse. My poetry has no faults. The Lord said, just give me a chance. And so he started to speak. And one by one, not only did he remember the verse, but he pointed out literary uh, mistakes in the way the composition was performed such as putting the, the verb before the subject, or using redundancy. When you say the same thing, when you say the same thing twice within the sentence, it's called redundancy. The husband of the wife of Lord Shiva, he said. Mm -hmm. Bharati, um, what was it, Bharati Bhavani, or something like that. Bharati Bhavani. So the Lord pointed out five faults and when Pandaji was he hearing that, he was like mortified. He was speechless. He couldn't say anything. He was stunned in shock. He was thinking, then he thought to himself, how is that? Mother Saraswati has defeated me through this boy. <laughs> He's thinking Lord Chaitanya was just an ordinary boy. <laughs> And then, of course, the Lord said, but there actually are, are so five ornaments, too, in that verse. And then he showed the five good points and five faults. But then he said to the pundit, you go home and take rest tonight, and maybe we can meet again tomorrow. <laughs> and But as soon as he was defeated, 
all of Lord Chaitanya's students, who were young boys, they all started to laugh loudly. Lord Chaitanya said, don't laugh. <laughs> he didn't want him to make him feel so bad. So that night, Pandaji went home, Keshava Kashmiri, and he took rest. As soon as he took rest, Saraswati, Mother Goddess Saraswati, appeared to him in a dream and says, that boy that you were meeting this evening is actually my master. <laughs> He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead incarnated in this age. So you should surrender at to his lotus feet. <laughs> and so Goddess Saraswati revealed, and then the next day he came and fell at the feet of Nimai Pandit, who was actually Lord Chaitanya, and surrendered everything. And actually, he asked for the Lord's mercy. The Lord said, actually, um, you continue to glorify through your poetic expressions. And then later on, that same, it's, this, this is interesting, because he is Nimbarka, and he came as Keshava Kashmiri. And then, as Keshava Kashmiri, he joined the Nimbarka Sampradaya. <laughs> Figure that one out. He is the person who started the Sampradaya, and he joined it after that in a different form. <laughs> Interesting. So that's, that uh, particular pastime is mentioned in the 16th chapter of Adi Lila. Is that what you're reading now? It's in the Adi Lila, chapter 16, in Chaitanya Charitamrita. No, you're, you're not reading that, huh? You're reading the weather report? No. <laughs> Uh, Adi 16, and uh, I think it's in the later part of the chapter as a whole. It's a long, 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 long pastime. I just gave the essential principles of the pastime. So this is a little bit of what we know about Nimb Nimbarka. But in uh, in Navatweep, um there is the temple, the Gaudiya Math, what is it called? Chaitanya Mat, just down by our temple, you know. And in there is the deities of Gandharva Giridhari, who install, installed by Bhakti Siddhanta, but he also installed four of the deities of the four Sampradaya Acharyas. So you have Madhvacharya, Vishnu Swami, Ramanujacharya, and Nimbarka, the four deities are there. And you can go take darshan there, beautiful little uh, parts of the altar where these, these acharyas are worshipped and installed and worshipped. It's beautiful. Uh, okay, so this is pretty much all I have on Nimbarka. Um, if you want to learn more, do a little research and you can find out more about his philosophical teachings. There are some books that teach the different philosophies of the four sampradayas, like that. But they are Radha Krishna worshippers and they worship, uh, mostly they emphasize Srimati Radharani. <laughs> okay, that's, that's it. <laughs> I don't have any more on Nimbarka. Anyone who would like to comment or we would be welcomed. Tulsi's marriage? Yes. There is a pastime, but I don't know it. There's a whole long pastime. Uh, Tulsi's husband was a big demon, and Vishnu killed him. Tulsi was chased to her husband when she fell to the material world. It says that she came to the material world and was cursed by Radharani. But people take that issue with that. Some of the Acharyas say that you, nobody gets cursed in Vrindavan. <laughs> so that's there. Um, 
But her husband was a powerful demon, and because she was chaste, cha chaste to him, very chaste, that's where he got his power from. So he was causing havoc and, and, and destroying all the demigods. Finally, even Mother, Mother Durga took the form of Bhadrakali and fought against him and couldn't defeat him. He was so powerful. Only because of the chastity. So what, what, the only one who could save the situation was Lord Vishnu. So Vishnu took the exact form of her husband. And uh, he tricked her, and therefore he broke her chastity. <laughs> and then when she broke, he broke her chastity, her real demon husband was easily killed. He was killed by Lord Shiva, I think. <clears throat> so, um, and then Tulsi, she got angry at Lord Vishnu. She said, I curse you to become a rock. So that's Shalagram Shila. <laughs> and he counter cursed her and said, may you become a, what was it? A plant or a leaf or something. <laughs> something like that. I forgot what he said. And of course, to worship Shalagram, you have to have Tulsi leaves. Otherwise, the worship's not authorized. So that's the little bit about the connection between, that's as much as I can remember from my previously hearing these pastimes. But the best part is the big fight <laughs> between the devas and this big powerful demon. So those of you who are married, none of you are married here, that's right, nobody's married here. If your wife is chaste, then you become powerful. She becomes powerful too. A woman's power is in her chastity. A woman is chaste, just like we have the story of Gandhari. Because she was so chaste <clears throat> that when she looked at the body of her son, Diodana, his whole body became like steel. She had blinded herself voluntarily in order not to become better than her husband, Dhritarashtra. So a chaste woman is very, very powerful. And anyone who f offends a chaste woman gets tremendous suffering. <laughs> That's why when Draupadi was offended by Dusha, Dushashan and Diodana, both of them were killed because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, any comments on chase women? No. Chastity. Chastity means well, there is principles of chastity that one must follow in order to make that chastity what it is. And that's, the women really know though, those principles. But if you study, you know who, you know who was one of the most chaste women in the history of all chaste, chaste women? It was Anasuya. Anasuya, the, the wife of... Um, what was his name? Oh. It's mentioned in the Bhagavatam. Suya, I can't remember. But she was so chaste that it said that Sita Devi came to her, this was even, and wanted to know the principles of chastity. Sita Devi was the consort of Lord Ram. So there's a part of the Ramayan that is not necessarily given to us in the regular form. And that's the uh, instructions of Anasuya to Sita Devi on the principles of chastity. It's interesting. I have a copy of that. It's 
really the most amazing. So yeah, Anasuya and what's his what's her husband's name? I can't remember. Can't think of his name. It's in the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Towards the beginning. Atri. Atri Muni, right, Timur. Atri Muni and Anasuya, yeah. She had this is this was funny. Uh, the demigods try to break her chastity. So um Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu appeared to her and uh, came and said, um, we would like to get uh, you to cook for us and you have to cook for us naked. <laughs> and she said, all right. But she had the power, she changed each one of them into little tiny children. So Brahma became a little kid, <laughs> Shiva too, Vishnu too. So there was these three little boys and then she cooked naked before these three little children who... Because <laughs> they tried to break her chastity but she wasn't able to. She was more intelligent and powerful than they were. <laughs> That's a nice story also. I think that's in the Bhagavatam too. Atri Muni prayed that the Supreme Lord become his son, but he didn't know who the Supreme Lord was. So all three of them came. <laughs> Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. <laughs> now he, he uh, yeah, he, uh, yeah, so what was it? Yeah, he wanted a son as good as the Lord. He, no, he wanted a son like the Lord. And the Lord said, well, actually, I'll just become your son. <laughs> There's nobody like me. <laughs> I'm starting to remember all these little parts of this pastime. Yeah, so the, the most chaste women in history are Anasuya, Sita Devi, and uh, Mandodari. You know who Mandodari is, right? Wife of Ravana, yeah. She was very chaste and faithful. So, yeah, Mandodari also speaks about the qualities of chastity also. Gandhari also. But Anasuya is considered to be the, the most chaste in all, of all the women in the Vedic history. Okay. So, if there's no comments or questions, we can stop. Yeah. Uh, regarding Tulsi Devi, um, uh -huh. so we understand that he's a, she is an expansion of internal energy. She must run, run, right? She has a role in the. Yeah, she's Rinda Devi in the spirit. Yeah. yeah. So that also means that the Tulsi plan here. It's not Jiva Tattva in, inherited no. in the plant, so it's a... No, it's, it's Vishnu Tattva, yeah. Shakti Tattva? Shakti, yeah. That's why, you know, when Prabhupada introduced it into our society, he was, whew, his god-brother, Sridhar Swami, who approached him, why are you giving this? It's too high for these people. The Tulsi is very kind. 
as it says in the Nectar of Devotion, simply by seeing her, simply by worshipping her, simply by offering obeisances to her, simply by offering a little water, simply by circumambulating, uh, one can achieve uh, her mercy. And, in to, and to get Radharani's mercy, you have to have Vrinda's mercy. Because she is Vrindavan, Vrinda Devi is Vrindavan, like that. Because Vrindavan means land of Tosi, that is the actual translation. When you say Vrindavan, you say Vrind, the place of Tosi, mm -hmm. like that. So it's not like we worship some plant just so we can, you know, fill up some time, you know. Uh, should always be very, very uh, cautious around Tulsi. One time one devotee brushed against her and Prabhupada saw it. You know, sometimes people walk and they brush against her. Prabhupada phew, chastised him. Yeah, because we just walk by her like she's just like, you know, part of the furniture. And she's a pure devotee. But we don't water her at night. That's a, that's a rule. Because if watering her at night will might cause her some discomfort and some dam could also cause some damage. So watering is only done in the morning, like that. It says after four o'clock in the afternoon she should not be watered, like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Tosi Vivaha Ki Jai, Nimbarka Charya Ki Jai, Krishna's Ratiyatra Ki Jai, uh, Kartik Vrata Ki Jai. Can't wait till next year for Kartik Vrata Ki <laughs> Hope it's not locked down Ki It's whole Nesh Chandra Mahaswai Maharaj Ki Jai. Thank <laughs> you.